So I will be talking about flavor asymmetry in the light C quark of in the proton. So this work is done in collaboration with uh, Professor Dipankar Chakravarti and uh, Chandan Monder. So, uh, so uh, as uh, we have discussed uh, in this workshop and school that proton, like uh, proton is just not valence quark and now it is we are worried about gluons and C quark content of the quark as well, uh, of the proton as well. So when we say that proton has, uh, in the valence quark there are only quarks, no, not the anti-quarks. So when we say that quarks, we cannot distinguish between a quark, whether it's a valence quark or C quark, but anti-quarks are C quarks only. So, so, uh, so this uh, is a, in, the, in the C sector, it is assumed that uh, U of C is same as U bar of C, and uh, we generally give convention that it's uh, U bar of X. And in, similarly, in, for the D C quarks, D C is same as D bar C, and which we, we generally denote by D bar C X. In, uh, so these uh, in the proton fo uh, in the proton folk state, if we write uh, the protons folk state in the leading folk state, we have uh, uh, just valence quark. Then gluons appears. Then C quarks can appear, and so on. There can be other higher folk states as well. So C quarks uh, generally appears in the five quark state, and also through the gluon splitting. So uh, so the in the gluon splitting, uh, these quarks appear. So the gluon splitting is not flavor, uh, it's a flavor independent thing. And also the mass of U bar and D bar is, uh, U and D quark is very similar. So it is generally assumed just uh, that U bar is also same as D bar. And this is known as flavor symmetry. So uh, in a way in the C sector, uh, all of these distributions are same. But uh, there is uh, there is problem. So in Gold, Goldfried in, in uh, measure this number, which is the difference of structure function of proton and neutron, and which can be written in terms of the distribution of valence and uh, C quarks or distribution of U, U and D bar, and which further comes in terms of uh, uh, difference of D bar and U bar, and this factor. So uh, if we have this flavor symmetry, then this number is one by three, but uh, later on uh, NMC collaboration reported that this number is less than one by three and it's coming, uh, which, which implies that uh, this T bar minus U bar is uh, non-zero and positive, which means that uh, there are uh, more number of D, D bar in, in the proton than U bar. So this is uh, known as flavor, uh, flavor asymmetry in the light C quarks. And uh, these kind of discussions we already had in in the in the school by Sangwa Park and in the first lecture by Christine, so uh, we will uh, particularly explore this problem. And uh, for that, uh, first I will introduce a particular framework in which we will study and we will proceed. So light front dynamics, uh, light front dynamics describe how a relativistic system changes along light front direc uh, direction. So in this frame, we redefine the variables like uh, light front time, which is de defined in terms of these uh, uh, P and third component of uh, space. And similarly, X minus is defined by the difference of these two and these X1, X2 are transverse component. And similarly, for the momentum components, there are P plus, P minus and P puff we can define. So there is there are certain benefits to go in light front and uh, like, like uh, the energy dispersion relation, there is no square root involved here. So we, we choose to work in light front. And uh, so in, in light front, solving non-perturbative QC QCD is like equivalent to solving I, uh, Hamiltonian eigenvalue problem. So, uh, so, so uh, in light front, so we, uh, we are particularly concerned about proton state. So any hadron state in light front, we can write in, uh, in terms of this multi-particle folk state. So this folk state as we discussed uh, that that can be only valence quark or gluons or C quarks as well and higher folk state. This psi n here is gives the probability of each such folk state. So these are no, known as light front wave functions and these uh, wave functions, uh, these light front wave functions depends upon the longitudinal momentum fraction, transverse momentum and helicity of each of these uh, parton which is uh, constituent of this uh, hadron. 
So uh, these wave functions are constructed by keeping in mind that uh, there should be longitudinal and momentum, uh, transverse momentum conservation, and each vertex, this total angular momentum com j j component should also uh, be, conservation should also follow. So with these uh, light front wave functions are essential object and they give uh, uh, like uh, intrinsic information about the structure of hadrons. So with the help of light front wave functions, we can calculate uh, the PDFs, TMDs, and GPDs, the things which we have discussed so far in this school and workshop. So uh, we, uh, so, uh, so using this framework, we will be calculating the symmetry which uh, the problem which we discussed that that was the motivation that how much is the flavor asymmetry in the proton so for that i am going to um, like uh, introduce a simplified model which is uh, for c quarks mainly so the idea is we we are saying that uh, proton we are taking this uh, five uh, five quark uh, state which is like u u d q q bar and uh, we are we are assuming that now the in the scattering the um, virtual photon is interacting with c quark now the c quark is active and the rest of the system and we are considering as a spectator and we are saying that which is in spin zero state now the proton is like uh, <coughs> two pa uh, two particle state of this uh, active c quark and the rest of the spe spectator and we can write the proton state in terms of this state and the light front wave function so using the properties of light front wave functions we can calculate these wave, wave functions and uh, which will complete our model so these wave functions uh, this phi is the two particle uh, wave function solution which we took from softwall ads qcd and also modified it with these two factors uh, which give uh, like which will highlight mainly the end point uh, behavior like this alpha x by power alpha will control the behavior in the x tending to zero region and this beta will control in x ten tending to one region so these are our parameters alpha beta and a which we need to fix through the model in our model these are our model parameters so for that uh, so for that uh, sorry uh, we we first with the help of light front wave functions we can calculate uh, pdfs so this is unpolarized pdf and we take data of CT, CTEC 18 NNLO data and we fit our uh, unpolarized PDF with uh, these data for each of them. Like this is the fitting for U D bar and this is for U bar. So from each of these fitting, we get the uh, fitting parameter for each of uh, these distributions. And then uh, once the parameters are fixed, we can calculate, uh, we can see the our predictions. So uh, we found that uh, average uh, longitudinal momentum carried by D bar is uh, this, and uh, this is the corresponding longitudinal momentum by U bar. Then we uh, like, so let us focus towards our the target, which was to see the flavor asymmetry in the light C quarks. So, uh, so asymmetry was mainly <coughs> in, in the, in the sense of difference of d bar minus u bar but uh, there are other ways in terms of them also uh, asymmetry is observed like d bar by u bar d bar plus uh, d bar minus u bar by d bar plus u bar so these kind of also these kind of asymmetries are also observed so these are results for d bar minus u bar and here we compared our, these are our results this blue uh, plot and uh, these are we also compared with sequest and nusia results which are two leading groups to pro provide uh, updated results about particularly about flavor asymmetries in the light sea quark so our results in if in for d bar minus u bar uh, our results are in good comparison with uh, nusia and uh, both of them we also compared with hermes here and uh, so uh, so here you can see this in the right plot this is the ratio of d bar by u bar so uh, like how much it deflects from one so uh, one thing is to observe that for up to uh, like we we fitted in 0 0.001 to one region in our model fitting and in in the range from 0 0.001 to 0 0.005 u bar is dominating and this is uh, this ratio is less than one which is also which could have been also seen here also that here in lower region lower x region u bar is more than d bar and then d bar is more than u bar so similarly here also that uh, uh, u bar initial small x region 
u bar is more than d bar and then uh, d bar dominates and uh, if we go be, uh, like towards x tending to 1 this uh, will come down in the higher x region this asymmetry will almost almost uh, they will be almost symmetric both, both the quarks so here you can also see the comparison uh, and uh, you so our results are not in good comparison with nusia but sequest our results are following this sequest manner so this table also the number the difference of d bar minus u bar in a particular region so uh, sequest uh, particularly focus in the middle region so uh, and our results are in very good uh, comparison uh, like uh, with the sequest result and nusia which particularly focus in the lower x region and uh, which mainly highlights that uh, d bar is more than u bar and this number is uh, sorry so our results are mainly uh, in better in agreement with sequest and there are other comparisons you can as you see so uh, so next is uh, helicity so we can also predict the helicity since we have the model parameters and light front wave functions so these uh, left left results are here for d bar helicity and uh, also the comparison with hermas and campas and uh, these are uh, for u bar and uh, the number the longitudinal spin contribution from d bar is coming around three percent and it's less around 2.6 percent for u bar then uh, we can also we also obtained the results for transversity which measures the distribution of quarks uh, trans uh, transverse spin in a transversely polarized proton and uh, which is coming uh, like um, these are corresponding distribution and this is actual charge for uh, u bar and d bar so these were uh, those were results in terms of pdfs now we will see some gpd results so uh, gpd contains information about the nucleon mass angular momentum and mechanical properties of the proton and the off forward matrix elements of vector currents can be parameterized in terms of these two gpds and uh, similarly this vec uh, axial vector current can be parameterized in terms of two other chiral event GPDs. So I am mainly for here um, flashing chiral even GPDs, chiral or not the chiral all. So here these two GPDs in this case, um, both the proton and the active quark, both of them are not changing its helicity state. But here proton is changing its helicity state, and based on that, these are, these two are divided. So we will be uh, looking for the GPDs at uh, skewness zero. So this uh, e tilde g will vanish. So we have the light front wave functions, and these are the corresponding relations of these GPDs in terms of uh, in, in in terms of these light front wave functions. So in the GPDs, which are function of x xi, uh, which is zero now, but third is the momentum transfer in the uh, like how much momentum is transferred. So here, k pop and k pop prime and k pop double prime are the corresponding initial and final uh, quarks momenta. And we can evaluate those GPDs with the help of our model light front wave functions. So uh, these are the results for, uh, see, so this upper panel shows the results for uh, U bar. And these are the results for D bar for, for these three GPDs, H, E, and H tilde. So these distributions are more or like similar for both of them. And uh, like even the, even the number, their amplitudes are also similar, but we can, we can see that difference if there is any uh, like difference between d bar and u bar so for that i am i'm in in for a particular value of t how much the difference of d bar minus u bar for in terms of this unpolarized gpd and e gpd and h tilde gpd these are the results here so you can see here that at lower x again in up to 0 0.005 uh, this uh, u bar is dominating and that and uh, after that this distribution is positive and uh, with t you can see as the t is uh, increasing the momentum transfer is increasing these distributions are falling down and at uh, higher x also this is being almost uh, symmetry is al almost vanishing and similar kind of results are coming from this from this e uh, d, d bar minus u bar interesting results we can see here from the helicity uh, from the helicity d bar minus u bar distribution. So here, uh, like uh, the behavior is opposite that for small x, uh, d bar is, helicity is more, then it, it is going down and then it's going, 
going positive and also the, you can see the dependency with the momentum transfer as well so so also the helicity is changing its sign twice so these are the helicity results now let us see the results of asymmetry in terms of tmds so the quark tmds which which gives a uh, uh, distribution of uh, quarks in three dimensional momentum space and uh, which are function of x and k up both the things so since now we have both spin uh, polarization and momentum of the quark there are various uh, correlation about in the spin and momentum are possible and based on that there are eight tmds for quark so like in the pdf we had only three pdfs but we, we have here eight tmds and based on these various correlations we can find that there are eight tmds like there is unpolarized helicity where both both the quark and nucleon was uh, is uh, longitudinally polarized then there is transversities and and other tmds so this is the corresponding correlator of tmd uh, which is a uh, forward matrix element and quark shows the quark quark correlation and based on this gamma we can calculate different different uh, tmds so uh, like this uh, we can we can find these tmds as the in terms of this correlator but since in our model we have the light front wave functions and so from there these relations we can find these tmds in terms of these uh, wave functions so these are so i am giving here the details of these three tmds mainly this unpolarized helicity and transversity so we we calculated the tmds for all the t event tmds for both up and down c quarks so these are the results for these three tmds uh, so upper is for uh, u bar uh, u bar c quark and uh, this down results are for d bar c quark so these uh, you can see that the most left uh, results for uh, unpolarized tmd both the distributions are positive and uh, their behavior is uh, very similar then uh, this the helicity tmd behavior you can see that uh, it around 0.3 to 0.6 this helicity is going in the negative slightly negative and which is also true for the d d bar as well and these transversity distribution is very similar to unpolarized distribution so these results are plotted in the in the model scale at the model scale and in the range 0.001 to 0.6 and uh, yeah so uh, so let us see the results in of flavor asymmetry in terms of these tmds like the first one is unpolarized asymmetry in the in terms of uh, tmds at certain value of uh, transverse momentum how how much this asymmetry is coming so so you see that uh, behavior is very similar to gpts like it's starting negative in the lower x it's negative independent of choice of k bar it's negative and u bar is more than d bar and then it's uh, positive and d bar started dominating and overall like in the proton d bar is more than uh, u bar that thing still holds then this is a uh, helicity dis, uh, asymmetry of uh, tmds so it uh, so it, that is like a uh, it uh, lower k up it's positive starting from negative and then it's being positive but it's some value of k up it's this difference is uh, starting from positive and then going to negative and then it's almost vanishing then uh, the behavior of uh, difference of this transversity as well so these were the results in 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 our model which was based on ads qcd now we uh, like uh, there is we try to see the behavior in a different model a phenomenological model in which which also we modified by this uh, factor and but the, we factored out x and k up uh, dependency here so using the this wave function and uh, this wave function we we again fitted the same data of ctec 18 and uh, found the model parameters and we tried to see how much the results are now differing so this uh, this re these results i am referring as model 2 and our initially discussed result are model 1 so here you see that uh, uh, like for d bar minus u bar these two are like uh, results are very similar model 1 uh, asymmetry is bit high than model 2 then this ratio of asymmetry also so here uh, this uh, for model 2 this uh, asymmetry is going up like but ideally for higher x it should go down 
So, and for model one, if we go beyond points uh, like point four also, we, we have seen that this asymmetry is going down for the ratio of d bar by n is d bar by u bar. <laughs> so then since we have, we have GPDs as well, like we have GPDs and we discussed, so we can calculate orbital angular momentum as well. So, so here these two, two plots show that, uh, so this is uh, the, angular momentum contribution from the D-bar in model one, two versus the light cone model. So th this model is uh, in this paper mentioned about the details of this model. So here you can see that uh, D-bar contributes more than U-bar. And also in light cone model, the angular moment, orbital angular momentum contribution is more and uh, from like model two contribution are more. And these are uh, U bar results here. So here in this table, you can see the number, like how much the contribution is coming and corresponding helicity. So from model two and light cone model, helicity is coming zero, but our model is giving non-zero helicity. And uh, we, we already have uh, seen uh, like uh, from some groups that helicity should be non-zero for for, for both the U bar and T bar. And also the difference of helicity is also reported recently from some groups. So the, that should be known zero. So in that sense, model one, model one gives better results. So uh, yeah, so that was about it. So now, so in, I, I will summarize that we discussed the two models. In the first model, we was based on ADS QCD wave function and uh, we fitted the model with CTEC data and we predicted flavor asymmetry in terms of like in, in terms of PDFs, the difference of asymmetry, ratio of asymmetries, and we compared our results with Sequest and Nusia data. And uh, we also predicted the asymmetry in, in terms of uh, these transverse momentum and uh, non-zero momentum transfer as well. And uh, our model gives non-zero helicity, which uh, like, uh, which is different than other models results so far. And we discussed orbital angular momentum as well. And we hope that EIC will, will say, uh, like predict some results about in future, some results about the flavor asymmetry of the C quarks. So, so, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Can you please uh, show the light front wave function that you are taking? So I understood it's a two particle light front wave function where your active parton is either a U bar or a D bar quark, right? Yes, yes. And the rest is basically C. The spectator is, a, is the remaining part, C yes. plus valence. Yeah. So how, what is the difference between your wave function when the active parton is an U bar with respect to when it is D bar? So uh, like their form are same, but after the fitting, their parameters will be different. Sorry, I missed this part. So what exactly are you fitting? I am fitting CT, CTAC 18 uh, NNLO PDF data and polarized with our unpolarized PDF 8Q 2GV in each, uh, model scale. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, well, one question, I think I see already the answer there. So the alpha and beta parameters are different for uh, U bar and D bar. You did not assume them to be uh, the same. Right, so you have different parameters for U bar and D bar. Yes, yes, from fitting as well, they are coming different because uh, like from the data itself, the, uh, the their distributions were dif different. Mm -hmm. So the parameters are also coming different. Okay, and then I wanted to ask you about the results for the TMDs and, and especially for G1, because from the plots, it's a bit difficult to, to judge. So. I, it looked like they had the same sign, the G1 for the uh, the G1, a G1 TMD. You had the 3D plots. Yeah. Yeah. Difference, okay. Yeah, no, 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 the, the previous one, the previous one. Okay. So it looks like the, the, the G1 has the same sign for U bar and D bar. Is it? Correct? Yes, yes, the science. And if you integrate this, do you get close to the results in the global fits or or, or not? Did you try to see what happens for the collinear uh, G1? So, uh, so you fitted with unpolarized PDF and uh, so, 
so second moment of uh, first moment of this helicity is uh, also i shown here in the earlier slide yeah both are positive and the difference of these helicities are also coming positive if we talk only in x space but when we go uh, see in terms of tmds and gpds it certain keep up transverse momentum it goes to negative as well then it goes to positive so that kind of change in sign can be seen in in tmds not in the pdf you are probably aware of that we did this measurements at rick with the w's yes i recently saw yeah w plus w minus and of course we see for the helicities a huge difference between u bar and d bar and opposite sign Yeah, because the okay uh it's again the the thing with the, the compass and the the hermes data say are nice but the uncertainties are large and uh the access because of the x range which is probed is is very is very difficult but the the w's are an extremely clean measurements and we have that unpolarized and polarized yeah, I, it's of course a different thing because W exchanges and PPs. I understand it's it's difficult to uh, uh, to include in your model, but uh, this doesn't agree with our measurements. Yes, since we fitted with PDFs, those additional information about particular flavor and charge that need to be incorporated. That is can be the uh, next step to improve this model. Okay, yes. Th thank you. Yeah.